Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so there has been a lot of talk and chatter on this channel about Gustavo Lemos, Richard Hitchens, the aftermath of all that. But I never really had a chance to give you guys my, my, my thoughts on some of the fights on the undercard. So uh, I wanted to kind of just run through that. You know, Diego Pacheco, Sky Nicholson, Mark Castro... You know, just 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 those fights. Give my, give my little thoughts on those fights. So we'll start with Diego Pacheco because you guys know that um, I, I rate Diego Pacheco. I like him a lot. Um, this is an interesting fight because on paper, you know, McCallum, Sean McCallum was an unknown commodity. He, uh, I, I came to learn later on that night um, upon doing some research that he had been in some camps with guys like uh, Tim Zhu and a couple other fighters. So he he's one of those guys, you know, a, a fighter that hadn't got his shot yet but had been in camps of upper echelon fighters. And then you, you look at Sean McCallum, you know, fighter that looks strong, looks sturdy, um, you know, and, you know, he was someone that I think just going off of his body language throughout the week, if during fight week, he, he looked like somebody that was, that was coming to win. And he did. And I think, you know, he lost the fight to Pacheco. So I think his stock actually goes up higher because not a whole lot was expected of him. And I think maybe for the first time in Diego Pacheco's career, He's uh, really and truthfully showed um, a lack of a next gear, because I mean, look, you look at the you, you look at his weight class. They got some bright young talents in this division, like Dave Morrell Jr. You got Edgar Belanga, who he's been linked to. You know, when these guys were his age, the Sean McCallum's of the world would have been pasted and lambasted. They would have been just put out of there. So I think it, you know, comparisons to Thiefer Joy. We're not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know, shit on him just by comparing him to the, those guys when they're his age. But if you're if you're if you're comparing Pacheco to like Morel or Belanga a couple years ago when when he was knocking these guys out, or even like his um, his stalemate David Benavidez, you know, um, he's lacking behind those guys. But that doesn't mean he won't, he can't still develop. You know, in the fight, I thought I thought Pacheco showed a, a decent outside game, good mid range game. You know. Um, what I learned in this fight about Pacheco is that he's a little over reliant on that straight right hand. Which, by the way, when you're when you're a tall guy with his frame, you should be throwing a lot of straight right hands. But when McCallum seemed to get inside those those long arms and hit him, um, he didn't look the most comfortable. And um, luckily for him, you know, he was the superior boxer to McCallum, and and, and that was enough to to get the decision. But in terms of ooing and awing and Really making that statement that you want to make at this stage of your career, um, I think I think in that regard um, he failed. So you know um, he'll get better. Uh, I think people forget that Pacheco is still you know twenty two years old, twenty three years old. He's a young young kid. So um, yeah, he's ranked highly. We know that he's been linked to fight Belanga for a long time, and I'll talk more on that later on. But um, you know, just, just, just if you're someone ranked in and around Pacheco. Um, that may fight him like a Christian and Billy, Eric Bosney, and those those kind of guys. This is the kind of performance where you kind of lick your chops a little bit because um, you know you see a guy who, who who does some good things in there, but you're not seeing a guy that um, is otherworldly, you know, special. But very, you know, got got his things about him. So um, we'll see how he bounces back from it. But he got the victory over a durable, uh, strong opponent in Sean McCallum, and hopefully better days ever for Diego Pacheco. He's my favorite. Uh, Matchroom Boxing USA prospect, or that prospect, but the, my, my favorite fighter from that Matchroom USA crop, you know, between Raymond Ford, him, uh, Mark Castro, all them guys. So I, I, I do, I thought highly from for a long time, and I, uh, and I do hope things bode well for him, and I, you know, we'll see how it goes. But switching gears, switching gears. Um, the other fight I wanted to talk about was Mark Castro because, again, another Matchroom Boxing USA fighter, a guy that um, had a big amateur pedigree. And I remember, you know, three three years ago, Mark Castro was always fighting on those Canelo undercards, getting a lot of hype just being on the undercard of Canelo fights. And he's getting to that stage now, you know, he's had some, for you know, underwhelming, you know, whatever type performances in his career. Keith Connolly, his esteemed manager, decided to move him down from 135 to 130. So he's, he's campaigning there now. And he had a fight against the veteran Mexican fighter, Abraham Montoya. Montoya has been around the block. Montoya has fought, uh, he has his most notable winners against the current IBF featherweight champion, Luis Venado Lopez, 
And, um, you know, you knew this was going to be on paper the toughest fight of Castro's career. And, you know, you, what, what, you're, what you're looking for from Castro in a fight, much like you were for Pacheco against Sean McCallum, is a statement performance where you show that no matter how tough or no matter how durable a guy could be, that you're just otherworldly. And that's not what we got from him either. Um, I think Montoya, he, you know, he, he's not going to win any awards for his hand speed. But he did a great job, I think, of um, punching in between the shots of Castro. You can see his shots coming from a mile away. And he was still finding a way to time Mark Castro. Mark Castro, a lot of times, does these videos on TikTok and Instagram showcasing his defense. And a lot of times in this fight, the crappy Mexican veteran found holes in that defense repeatedly, banging them to the uh, banging punches down to the body, up top to the head. And um, like I said, Mark Castro will go at the full distance. He's, he's I believe, he's like 13-0 now. So he's at 130, and I, and I know, like, when you evaluate what, what could be a big fight for him, I mean, I, I want to see him fight the guys at 35, like Ashton Silve or, or um, you know, Floyd Schofield. I feel like that's, you know, something that he should be looking at, but... He's at 30, so we'll see what Keith Conley does. But, yeah, you know, Mark Castro, I would say, because, you know, a couple of these Match from USA guys have already lost and, and, and already shown that they're not, like, on that level yet. With, like, Ofa Jones already lost, even though I like him. Ofa Jones lost. Nikita Abibi's career stagnated. Um, Raymond Ford's champion. He, he actually showed a lot. Uh, Pacheco, you know, underwhelmed his fight. And now, I think, but the thing with Castro, Castro's been on, like, Castro, he's winning. But he's not looking the part of a blue chip, otherworldly talent that Matchroom Boxing was hoping for. So, you know, if if I, if I learned anything from Raymond Ford when he fought, is that you don't want to make too, uh, judgments too early on a fighter. Guys develop. But um, right now, um, I think with the Montoya fights and, and, and a lot of the fights he had in his career, he's just um, not quite up to par. You know, and that is what it is. Not everybody, not every, not every fighter can... Ooh, and ah, every performance, but I just think, you know, we, 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 we Castro, I'm still looking for more from him, and he hasn't quite delivered on that yet, so we'll see what happens with him. And then last but not least, uh, Sky Nicholson, you know, she fought for the WBC women's uh, featherweight title against the former world title challenger, Sarah Mafoud from Denmark, you know, was a, uh, I think, what, Sky Nicholson's, I believe, what, 10th, 10th pro fight, something like that, Um so, you know, my food have fought Amanda Serrano. So it's a common, they have a common, uh, she has, she's fought Amanda Serrano, someone that Sky Nicholson's trying to fight. We know that Serrano didn't fight her for whatever the case may be. Um, some people will say she ducked Sky Nicholson or they'll say that Sky Nicholson was scared of three minute rounds. Depends on which side of the street you're on with that. But um, the fight went pretty much how I thought it would go. Sky Nicholson um, was the superior boxer. She showcased those skills from the outside and, 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 and um, looked like a women's version of Billy Joe Saunders, you know, just the way she moved and the way she boxed. Um, my food couldn't really close the gap another way she wanted to. Sky Nicholson was lighting her up from the outside and seemed to do more of it as the fight went on. So, like, that fight, with that fight, there's not much in it for me. I mean, Sky Nicholson proved that she's uh, levels above this girl and she's champion within like 10 fights. And um, I'll tell you this, man, if Jaya Pattaya didn't exist, she might be the best Australian boxer as far as talent because. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying she's the most exciting. I'm not saying any of that stuff. But she's definitely, in terms of talent and 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 perfecting what she's good at, she's amazing. At, at just the technical part of boxing, and I don't think Sky Nicholson will fully get that appreciation until she gets those big fights. I'm hoping Amanda Serrano her could come to an agreement and make a fight because these these Sarah Mafu girls like they're not gonna ever beat the Sky Nicholsons of the world. So those are my thoughts on that fight. And the last but not least, and to me. This was actually the most impressive performance on the undercard. You know, I've started this video talking about matchroom uh, fighters that didn't quite deliver in showing what I was looking for with Pacheco and Castro. But here's a guy that actually showed me exactly what I was looking for with Galal Yafai. Galal Yafai, we all know his pedigree, gold medalist, comes from a fighting family. One brother was world champion. The other brother was European champion. So they're, they're a very successful boxing family. And he was taking a nice step up in class against a tough Argentine in Augustine Galto, a guy that I, I know about pretty well. I made a video about him along with Gustavo almost three years ago with my boy Johnny. And um, Galto was coming to win. He had that energy the whole week. If you were you're being around on fight week, I knew he was coming to win. And that's what he was. That's what he did. Um, I, I, he tried to employ this counter punching style where he would punch in between the shots of Galayufai. But I think one great thing that Galaf Yafai did throughout the fight was keeping his punches short, 
keeping his punches straight and keeping his punches at a nice, steady, and high volume. These things allowed him to push Augustine Gato on the back foot enough for him to win a lot of the rounds. And on top of that, it limited um, the counter-punching opportunities he did have because with him being on the back foot, he's not comfortable punching off the back foot. So he only was able to really counter-punch and sharp shoot in between the shots when he was either stationary or coming forward. And so Goliath Fai, he took some good shots. I mean, Gato caught him clean, caught him flush with big shots, huge shots. But he was able to show a good chin and, and still show that he had the heart of a fighter. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good win over a tough, rugged Argentinian fighter. Um, I saw Goliath Fai after the fight. I actually had a chance. To, I had the pleasure to meet him for the first time. I didn't interview him, but I had a chance to meet him because I was saying hello to his brothers. You know, me and Cal and me and Gamal and, and um, their friend uh, Joe from... Uh, from Birmingham, you know, I, I went there in 2019, visited their gym when, you know, um, Cal and Gamal were still fighting and they treated me very well. So we, we, we've kept in touch over the years here and there and, you know, I just was chatting with them and I, I saw I saw Galau and Galau, you know, make, make no mistake about it. He won the fight, he looked good, but Gato leathered, leathered him pretty good because he had, it looked like some stitches in, in his eyes and uh, he definitely, you know, he won, but it wasn't without... Um, any sort of punishment being dished out from Gato. So look, hopefully Gato can get some more uh, opportunities. I think he's a good fighter. I just think, um, you know, uh, Galaya Fai, a little bit too a little bit too sharp for him, a little bit too complete for him. But a lesser guy than Galaya Fai, he probably winds up being, you know, honestly, because he, he, he went in there and gave a good account of himself. So this now puts Galaya Fai in a position where, you know, they're fast tracking him. He's like 5-0 and now. He's 30 years old. Big amateur background. They want to make the Sonny Edwards fight. That's a big British fight. That's a big rivalry fight. They fought the amateurs. And uh, that's a fight that I'll be very excited about as a fight fan. Because Sonny Edwards, we know what he brings to the table. We know Goliath Fai is a top grade fighter. Even with five fights, we know he's a top grade fighter. So, yeah, but like I was saying, we know Galau Yafai is a top grade fighter. You know, he's ranked very highly in a lot of the sanctioning organizations. Um, and look, man, a title shot's right around the corner. You know, a couple of fights I'd like to see for him next would either be like, I want to see him fight Ricardo Sandoval. If not Ricardo Sandoval, then maybe someone like a, um, maybe, maybe, maybe the winner of Anthony Olas Kuaga versus Rico Kanu because Anthony Olas Kuaga and Rico Kanu are fighting for that vacant WBO title that Bam just vacated because we know Bam is going up to 115 to take on guy with strata so um with the winner of that I, I think either one of those fights will suffice if not sunny edwards but um to me definitely the the performer of the night and definitely someone that i think you know british fighters get a lot of flack sometimes for not having that grit and that determination and i think he deserves a lot of credit for his grit and his determination against a very very dangerous fighter in augustine gato so those are my thoughts on uh some on the undercar fights and and and, and you know just castro pacheco you know they they, they got work to do um, Sky Nicholson's champion, but she needs to get those big fights to, for her to really prove herself against the top competition. So hopefully Amanda Serrano her come to an agreement. And Galayu Fai, right there, knocking on the door of a world title shot. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time. Thank you for watching another video on The Untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Box Hall of Fame out here in Canada, Florida, New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.